Hey y'all, I'm so glad you're here today and I'm so excited to share today's DIYs. I hope you really enjoy them. This video is part of a playlist. It's called the Fourth Friday Playlist and it's one that I host with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY and a link to her channel and a link to our playlist is gonna be in the description box below. I really hope you enjoy today's crafts. My name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Starting off today's DIYs, this is going to be a centerpiece for my table, or actually, I don't know. I may put this on my front porch. I haven't totally decided yet, but I got this flowers and garden container from Dollar Tree, and I'm just removing the sticker. And then I'm gonna give it a couple coats of folk art paint in the color Vintage White, and I'm gonna let that dry. I'm taking my finger sander and lightly going over the letters on the container. I want them to kind of peek through and have a shabby chic, distressed kind of look. I took some paint and the colors I used were like yellow, orange, brown, and gray, and I was trying to mimic rust. Now it didn't turn out exactly the way that I was thinking, so I just dry brushed some of that mixture on to give the container a bit more dimension and a bit more distressed look. Now, I'm taking some styrofoam that came from something that I ordered. I always try to reuse stuff if I can, and um, I think project. Anyways, I'm going to cut it down and place some of that in the container. And I also need a better way, so if you know a better way, I need a better way to cut this down because it just got really messy and those little styrofoam pieces just were everywhere. And next, I'm taking these florals that are from Dollar Tree, and I have to tell you, my great-granddaughter, Oakley, hey, Oakley, if you're watching, Nana and Poppy love you. Anyway, she brought me these over Christmas, and I decided they would be perfect to use for this DIY, and I also added some lighter pink florals to balance it all out. And this is how it turned out. It is beautiful. I love how it has a bit of vintage vibe, kind of romantic, shabby chic, and I love that the florals I used were something my great-granddaughter gave me. Crafty DIYs on a Budget is the Facebook group I run with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. And I would love it if you would join. There's going to be a link in the description box below. Come check it out and see all the fun things that we are posting. I have been loving changing out my front door decor for the seasons and holidays, so I thought I'd whip up a cute little sign for Valentine's Day. I'm using this round sign that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to remove the twine, but I'm not going to cover up the holes because I'll use them to hang it later. And I'm going to paint half of the circle with folk art rich black, and also this heart that came off another Dollar Tree sign. It was already black, but I wanted to make sure it was the same shade. The next step is to cover the other half of the round sign with glue. Normally I use Mod Podge, but to be honest, glue dries quicker and I was needing to finish up this project. I'm just gonna be gluing down the craft paper that I got from Hobby Lobby to the bottom half of the sign, or at least what I thought was gonna be the bottom half of the sign. You're gonna see what I mean in a minute. I'm taking a white paint pen and just adding some dots around the outside of the heart. And then I'll go in with a red paint pen and do the same. And I wanted to show you my thought process when I was creating the sign. Originally, I was gonna have the buffalo check on the bottom half, but it looked too busy visually for me. So I played around with some other options. With Captain's help, I created a very simple bow and attached some greenery behind it. I tied it all together with twine and then I hot glued it to the top of the sign. I added a love wood cutout word to the heart and glued that down on the right side. Would it be too cheesy if I said, I love how this sign turned out? Well, I do love it, and I think it'll look cute on my front door. I need to go back and fill those holes at the bottom, but other than that, this 
piece is complete. This video is part of an open playlist called Fourth Friday and Sarah from GGB DIY and I host this every month. I'll have a link to Sarah's channel as well as the playlist in the description box below. And if you are a creator and want to get in on the fun, let me know. We'd love to have you. Please be sure and show some love to all the creators on the playlist. I saw this sign at Hobby Lobby and regular price it was $24.99 and at 40% off it was $14.99. But even if it was 50% off, I knew I could easily recreate it for less. At Christmas time, I tried to make a hot cocoa sign but had accidentally cut off a letter and it was going to be too hard for me to just make that one letter without wasting a bunch of vinyl. So I just decided that I would reuse it at another time. And today is that day. So I peeled off all of the vinyl that was there and then sanded it down. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalk Ultimate Paint in the color Linen, and it's one of my go-to favorites. And even though it, did, it does cover very well, I did give it two coats, and I tried to make sure any lines that were coming from the brush were horizontal because I wanted any visible paint strokes to mimic paper lines. I did use my Cricut to make a decal of the quote, and I used the American typewriter font and used the decals my guide to where I wanted to put the lines, and I just marked it with a pencil. And I again just used the decal as a guide to know where I needed to mark the margin line and just used my pencil to mark it. I could have used a paint pen for this part, but I did not have any like fine tip paint pens. And I didn't necessarily want to go buy one, so I just used a Sharpie marker that I had on hand. And even though I had marked it in pencil with the lines, I used a ruler just to kind of help keep it as straight as possible. Same thing for the margin line, although I did actually have a red fine tip paint pen. It just seemed too liquidy, and so I just used a Sharpie marker. I then cut the decal into individual lines as I thought it would just be a lot easier when transferring it, and I didn't want to have to worry about it matching up or anything like that. So it worked out perfectly and was already looking so cute. I also put some brown craft paper that I get in rolls at the Dollar Tree on the back to give a finished look and to complete the piece I glued two red hearts to the bottom corner. And this is how it turned out. This quote is from Kirsten White from the book The Chaos of the Stars and I thought it was a sweet Valentine sentiment and I had a lot of fun recreating it. Total for the project was less than $5, so it was easy on the budget as well. This is my favorite DIY of this video, and it, as it holds a lot of meaning for me, and I'll tell you more about that in a second, but y'all, this sign was 90% off, so that means I only paid $2 for it, and I wanted to show y'all how easy it is to convert a Hobby Lobby sign into what we, in the DIY world, call a blank. Now, if you'll notice, it does have ice cream cones etched into the wood, but we can fix that with all-purpose joint compound. You can use wood filler or spackle, but I like the texture of joint compound for this type of project. I used a spatula tool thing that you can get at Dollar Tree. Um, you see me using it here, and I also use my hands to try and press the joint compound mixture into the etched areas. Then I take my favorite scraper tool, also from the Dollar Tree, and I scrape off the excess. And I try to skim it across the surface and then take what I skim off and push it back into the etched areas and repeat that process over and over. I'm just trying to make sure it is as level as possible. joint compound does take a little longer to dry so after it is completely dry I take a black sander from Dollar Tree and try to smooth out the surface. 
but please be aware this does create quite a bit of dust so i re uh, recommend wearing a mask for this part and doing it outside if you can the reason I have gloves on is because I got my nails done and I ain't trying to ruin them with this Waverly Wax in the color Antiques. So this container is almost empty. I just added a bit of water and I'm using it to stain the frame and then wiping the excess off with a damp cloth. Now for the inside of the sign, I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalk Ultra Matte Paint in the color Charcoal, and I'm just going around the edges first. And yes, I'm not the neatest painter, so I should have just used painter's tape to take this off, but it is what it is. I'm just going for it. I then go in and fill the center with paint and work my way up the sign, and yeah, I probably should have used a bigger brush, but I didn't. Now I'm just trying to measure where the words need to go so that I can try to make it even and spaced correctly. Now for those that don't know, I was hospitalized with COVID in December of 2020. I was diagnosed with COVID double pneumonia and acute respiratory failure. I was in ICU for three weeks and they said that I almost didn't make it, but thankfully I did start to improve but while I was in the hospital, I got a lot of comfort listening to music. And one of the songs that I had on repeat all day long, every day, was Peace Be Still by Lauren Daigle. The words just really spoke to me, and I wanted to create the sign kind of as a reminder to myself of God's grace, and a reminder to pray for those doctors, nurses, and those techs that cared for me in the hospital. They were such a blessing to me, y'all. Because of the meaning behind this sign, it is probably one of my all-time favorite projects that I've ever done. I listened to the song again on repeat while I created the sign, and I just love the line, Peace be still, you are here so it is well. Thank you, Lauren Tegel, for creating such a beautiful song. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today. I really appreciated the company and I hope you enjoyed the crafts that I made. I'm going to link some other videos that you can watch and um, I hope you will. And uh, I think that's it. If you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.